everybody. Welcome to Soul Says Turn Off. It is good to have you here. We have got a great show for you. This is a good one. This is a real good one. I am Josh Chernoff, and we are on the heels of WrestleMania, but not just WrestleMania itself. The entire weekend, hell, almost the whole week has been all about wrestling. Now, if this is the first time you've joined us here on So Says Chernoff, you're in for a treat. You are also in for a somewhat unique episode because I spent this long weekend in New York City and I had the opportunity to speak with legends and Hall of Famers and Virgil. We are going to show you some of those interviews as well as my trip to WWE Fan Access. All that is coming up, but first, headlines. <laughs> this past weekend saw the Hall of Fame induction ceremony, which, by the way, apparently six episodes of your own show on fight, not enough to get you into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Maybe next year. Now, we will get back to the Hall of Fame in a minute, but there's so much more going on this weekend. There was NXT, there was WrestleMania, but there was also a couple thousand other wrestling events going on, most of which were shown by Fight TV. And while a huge highlight of my weekend was being on the receiving end of Matt Stryker's finger poke of doom, <laughs> the biggest highlight for most fans took place at Madison Square Garden. The G1 Supercard was incredible. Ring of Honor and New Japan laid it all on the line and showed the wrestling world that there was more than one option in this business. A memorable moment was when the artists, formerly known as Wrestlers with Upside, Enzo and Big Cass, jumped the guardrail and got into a very <laughs> sloppy brawl with some ROH talent. Bully Ray even made his way out to ragdoll Enzo around a bit. But they weren't the only people who jumped guardrails this weekend. Some fan decided to attack Bret Hart. Now, I'm not going to give this character his 15 minutes by putting his image on my show. Instead, I'm going to replace him with an image that truly represents him as a human being. <laughs> so, Bret Hart is my favorite of all time. However, Dash Wilder is now a very close second. <laughs> Future big time wrestling promotion and glorified t-shirt company, AEW, have signed Jim Ross to the most lucrative deal in commentating history. And I think this is great, but you have to look at the irony of the situation here. The WWE spends well over a decade grooming Michael Cole and numerous others to become the new voice of the WWE. And then the old voice of the WWE goes on to become the new voice of the new competition. <laughs> Ross has stated that AEW will have a TV show on a major network starting in October. So that's six more months and about 37 more t-shirts until the debut episode. <laughs> I was a guest at MLW's Battle Riot 2 this past weekend. It was an incredible show with incredible athletes. There was one thing that stood out to me though. Well, two things, or you know, two things the size of 10 things. These buxom gentlemen lost in about a minute to, I assume, heart disease. But, but the main event saw L.A. Park versus Sammy Callahan. So L.A. Park is former WCW luchador La Parca just with a new name and relatively the same mask and bodysuit. Now, I don't want to tell you how to live your life, but maybe the best way to inject some youth into the character isn't changing the pronunciation of the name, but the athlete wearing the outfit. Now, I'm not <laughs> saying he's gotten fat, but it's definitely a little more meat on those bones. <laughs> so now the part of the show I have been waiting two weeks for. Late night satirical news host and guy clearly gunning for my job, John Oliver, <laughs> decided to try his hand at some wrestling satire last week, which, you know, it's kind of my gimmick, but whatever. <laughs> I haven't caught his most recent episode yet, but I am assuming he's wearing a great custom tie. <laughs> anyway, the fallout has been interesting. WWE says he's one-sided and wrong. Non-WWE employees say he hit the nail on the head with a steel chair all the while knowing the, the, the nail didn't have health insurance. And WWE superstars themselves have been silent. Now, I watched John's take on this subject and I have to side with the WWE. I mean, let's look at the facts. John Oliver claims the WWE and Vince McMahon don't care about its athletes or else they would have a union. Well, Mr. Oliver, for your information, the WWE had a union and it was a disaster. I'd argue that nobody involved in that union would like to see it happen again. 
<laughs> on the side of Oliver was former NXT ring announcer and guy who raised his hand to tell the teacher you were talking, <laughs> Alex Del Barrio. He pointed out that it goes deeper than just the wrestlers. He tweeted, thank you, John Oliver, for exposing the fraud that is the independent contractor status of WWE talent. Guess what? It doesn't just apply to the wrestlers, but also their announce team. He did note, however, that he would work there again. So, you know, good luck with that. But Alex is right. There is so much to unpack in a story like this. John Oliver started a conversation in the mainstream that has been happening for decades in the locker room. It's a conversation that has to continue. But for now, the most important takeaway from all of this must be that John Oliver needs to stay in his lane. John, I'm a huge fan of yours. I copy, I, I mean, I, I respect what you do. But from now on, would you just do me a little favor? You can have the rest of the world. Just leave me the universe. And that's Headlines. We'll be right back. On my show, Barbells and Body Slams, I have a unique approach to not only help you become inspired, some of your favorite memories and characters in the past and present in professional wrestling, but to actually help you take action and become the best version of yourself. I'll take you behind the scenes with personal interviews with some of your favorite wrestlers to help you learn how they overcome their own obstacles and stay motivated. I can't wait to share with you some fun and exciting stuff. Bobos and Body Slams will help you, I believe, climb to the top rope of your fitness success. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, a little later in the show, I will bring you a segment from WWE Access where I ask the fans what gimmick they would choose if they were wrestlers. But this was a special weekend, and this is a special episode. And since I was already in New York City at the biggest wrestling convention of the year, WrestleCon, surrounded by some of the biggest names in our business, I thought, I wonder what gimmick they would choose if they, the wrestlers, could do it all over again. You had a couple of different gimmicks, you know, over the, yes. you know, starting smoking okay, guns yeah. and that, yeah. Rock and uh, Billy, yeah. Rock, like the, yeah. The one, uh, the one yeah. yeah. And Billy, yeah. Yeah, there, there, were, Billy gun yeah, there were a lot. Yeah, there's a bunch it, of them. There were a lot more than I was, even when I said that, like, yeah. <laughs> like, I was, I was man, thinking I of, like, it, two or it, three it, of them, it, but yeah. yeah. If you had to pick a totally different gimmick, what you would say in your mind, like, this is the gimmick that I want for myself, what would it be? A truck driver. Yeah? <laughs> a what? A truck driver. Oh, uh, let's see. What type of gimmick would I have loved to have done if I hadn't and I haven't done before? Hmm. Man, I don't know. I don't know if I would choose a different gimmick, to be quite honest with you. I'd come back as uh, Greg the Millionaire, <laughs> you know, and have Vince fly me in first class all over the place and throw $100 bills everywhere. I'd be Greg the Millionaire. That was a pretty uh, decent gimmick. And, uh, somebody <laughs> got there. Yeah! <laughs> I, I travel miles and miles, but then I've landed my big career as a professional yeah. wrestler. And I can drive cross country, I can drive to all these shows. I could be Welcome Johnny. Welcome to the pit stop. <laughs> don't, don't, Come on, don't. I'm trying to work with you here. <laughs> I'd be in control of an army of midgets, um, all dressed alike. I actually have two for this. Okay. So the one I would like to be the undead groom, Rich Swan. People know that my wife is Sue Young, and she's dead. She's she's dead. So, Very sorry for your loss. Yeah, she's a zombie, so. I'd try to be Doink the Clown. <laughs> we call it the swarm, and then all I'd have to do is walk out on stage, and uh, you'd hear an air raid siren, I'd point my finger, and out from under the ring, they'd just come like a swarm of tiny people, overwhelming my opponents and just beating them down with their tiny fists. I would love to do it all over again, but this time I wanted to get really, really, I mean, paid for it. I could drive my way to the top over the open roads. Good. Truck yeah. driver Johnny. Yeah. He never all right, truck, sleeps. truck driver Johnny, he never sleeps. <laughs> I like it. I like that a lot. See? Yeah. See, I can make anything a work, boys. One stop to the pit stop. You got your hype man right yeah. here for you, too. Yeah. I'm with you, Stunt. I grew up with Mr. Perfect, uh, my buddies, and, you know, ravishing Rick Rude. And, you know, I'm not saying that I could have been like Rick Rude and shaking my hips, you know. <laughs> probably, probably an anarchist. 
that just, you know, debating all the time, debating issues, letting those debates blow up into, you know, matches that, hey, we'll, we'll settle this in the ring then, you know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah, I could see myself doing an anarchist gimmick just because I'm a damn good anarchist. Something clownish, you know, it'd been great to do with Doink, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Matt Matt Warren, he was a you know a good friend of mine, and, and he did that thing so well. Oh, yeah, I could have been a Riddler, maybe, and been his sidekick. <laughs> if you had one gimmick that you could just choose, where you, it was going to get greenlit by any promoter or anything like that, what would it be? To the yeah, to the pit stop. Truck, truck driver. driver. Be a truck driver. <laughs> Back up to you, Tom. What type of a gimmick would you choose if you had to pick a different one? So I'll tell you the two names that I wanted to be in WWE. Okay. I don't even know if I've ever said this before. Uh, I had two names that I thought would take over the wrestling world, and I eventually gave them to Sami Zayn. I said, you can choose them, and he actually pitched them also, okay. but they went with Sami Zayn. Uh, I wanted to be Mookie or Kirby, and uh, maybe have a last name, but eventually Vince would have scrapped that. Right, right. There's a video game that I played, and I have a created star on there, and his name is Extreme Bryce Carter, and all he does is just high-flying moves, over the top, dives off of freaking, you know, uh, uh, trucks and, and titantrons and goes through tables, sets fires, suplexes people off the... Yo, it's just insane. And uh, if I could really do that and put my body through that every single night, you know, and not be hurt, I'd be all right. I always joke around and say I wish I would have came up with Mr. Sacco. I'd still be wrestling. So I can be able to retire yeah, and, be and, 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 and be out on a golf course with Greg you know, hitting those golf balls and, and living the dream like Ric Flair and, and stuff like that, where the Coco be work and go, ooh, and really mean it. Okay. You know, that's what I want. If I, if I could do that all over again, that's what I would love. So we'll boil that down to a golfer gimmick. That's it. There you go. Exactly right. A retired golfer. That's That was the gimmick hey, you wanted to have. That's a uh, WrestleMania main event uh, entrance and match, if I've ever ever heard of one. Unquestionably. And uh, they're easy to transport. I mean, you don't have to have a big vehicle. I mean, no, just a couple of duffel bags and you're good. Lay them end to end like logs, you'll be fine. I wanted to do a gimmick that was part, uh, like, Road Warrior. Not Road Warrior, Road Warriors, like Legion mm -hmm. of Doom Warrior, but like the movie Road Warrior. Warrior. Something like that crossed with something like uh, a futuristic looking thing. Hawk and I may have been a little bit like the Revival. Okay. But bigger version of them, you know, without yeah. face paint on. I mean, that kind of just rugged brawlers. Well, I always uh, lo loved comic book characters, everything. I loved, loved uh, uh, Warriors and, you know, those kind of, that kind of stuff. So, some kind of maybe, like Sting did with face paint and kind of a gladiator kind of I almost did a gladiator outfit one time, but they yeah. they changed it on me, but Kind of a, or like a gladiator type thing would have been cool. You can't hate a Mookie and you can't hate a Kirby. They're just like natural, they're natural good guys. No one's going to hate a Kirby or a Mookie. So uh, I don't know the gimmick, but that, in, in my, if, if we could do a do over for the Goldman years, I would be uh, Mookie. Mookie Monroe was, was going to be my name. And wow. then we just, we take out Monroe eventually and I'd just, just be Mookie. Mookie. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Most of the places you wrestle, there's no pyro. And I wanted to wear something like, you know, I could say cod piece and people will snicker and laugh, but and have a grinder with a chunk of metal and do my own pyro and have the spark shooting up on the ring entrance. You want to be a truck driver too? You know, you took my idea. We talked about this last week where I should take my gimmick, and you said the truck stop, so I'm kind of salty that you just took that from me. Um, yeah, so maybe a taxi driver. Oh, all right. Pay your fare, because I don't play fair, and I don't share. What do you You're think? One stop to the pit stop You're a genius. and the taxi driver You're fare. A genius. They don't this is money. This is money. That is a future like, Hall of Fame yeah. gimmick right there. Gimmicks. Come to Billy Gunn and Austin Gunn. We got you. <laughs> what name would you have used? That's a good question. Um, Just the anarchist? Ooh, actually, yeah. That's simple, right? Yeah. Run with simple. Otherwise, I'll overthink it and I'll never come to it. The anarchist. That's it. Anarchist. Hell yeah. Thank you. The anarchist Val Venus. Thank there you, you so much the for taking the time. anarchist Val Venus. I love it. Not a lot of people know this, but uh, I like to tell anyone who will listen that my last match in the ring was against this young kid in his pretty much first singles match. Oh. Went by the name of Rich Swan. Yeah, the and blue uh, chipper. Yeah, and, and and Rich, if you could just remind everybody of who uh, who won that match. You know, uh, my memory is a little foggy. Uh, allow me to remind you, I won that match. 
And I've been thinking, you know, I noticed that you're a X Division champion, former WWE Cruiserweight champion. Yeah. So I kind of felt like, in a way, kind of makes me like an honorary, honorary. X Division Cruiserweight, like a Cruiser X Division champion. Cruiser X champion. Yeah, so I, I thought I would take this moment, um, in front Did of all of our fans here, in? yeah, to uh, for you to just hand on over these championship belts and I can display them on my bookshelf uh, in the studio. All right. You did beat me. You beat me one, two, three. You had me down. My shoulders were pent. I was young. Seventeen. How old were you? You were a grown man. You were a grown man. Beating up on a 17-year-old. It's my fault. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I apologize. Do you really think I should give you this championship? 100%. I thank you. Look at the man he is. Look at that. Oh, no. I can give you this one. Absolutely. Awesome. I'll take this. And I'll take that as soon as we cut. No. Thank you so much, Rich. Thank you, Josh. Be right over here. All right. For those wondering, yes, I now have Rich Swan's championships. When we return, I will take you with me to WWE Fan Access, where I asked the WWE Universe what gimmick they would choose. If you thought the wrestlers had interesting answers, well, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey guys, it's the interview queen, Alicia Atut here, and I just wanna let you know to check out Barbells and Body Slams. If you did not see that amazing reel video, one, not only was the production super sick on it, but two, the passion that is shown in it is ridiculous. You can seriously tell that he cares so much, not only about physicality and getting fit, but also just wrestling in general. So if you want to get fit, or you happen to love the fitness life, and you love wrestling, check this site out. Don't forget to subscribe to all of the videos. Hello everybody, welcome back to the show. I'm here at WWE Fan Access, the ultimate fan experience. And I decided what I wanted to do was I wanted to ask these fans if they were a wrestler, if they were a part of the WWE, what name, what gimmick would they have? The answers were, uh, were interesting. You just got yourself a contract with the WWE, What's your name? What's your gimmick? What would you say? John McNasty. John McNasty? John McNasty. I would go with Adrian Storm. Uh, my gimmick would be a undead biker. You are the newest member of the WWE roster. We need to know right now, what is your name? What is your gimmick? What would you tell them? My name is going to be Jack Attack, the most epic thing that's ever entered the WWE ring. So ja Jack Attack? Jack Attacks. Jack Attacks. Yes, OK. Sir. I am Suplex and Stilettos. Living my best life in high heels wrestling. Wow, okay, and what, and what, all right, so, oh wow, she was really prepared for this, okay. Oh, what's your finish? Um, the McNasty Slam. So what does the McNasty Slam look like without you showing me physically? When you pick them up and then you spin them around then you drop them, then you pick them up again, then you drop them again. That does sound McNasty. So basically you're taking current Undertaker, or dead man Undertaker, and sitting him on the American Badass's bike. Yep. Just like that. Vince McMahon, Stephanie McMahon, Triple H, any of them, they come out here right now and they say, Chris, you are the newest member of the WWE roster, but we need to know your name and your gimmick right now. What do you say? My name is Chris Stone, and I'm the next powerful, magnificent, spectacular force to ever step foot in this ring. So what's your finish? My my finisher, it would have to, I'm not going to lie, I would mimic it after my favorite superstar, Shawn Michaels, it'd be, it'd be the super kick. All right, a little sweet chin music. Yes, sir. Would you call it something else? Mm, honestly, probably not. What is your finish? The high heel drop kick. So are you actually wearing high heels in the ring? Yeah. Yeah, well, God, so mine's is out. Why not, right? My name's Dr. Verducci. I'm the boss. And if you get ready, you're going to get the prescription drug. Oh. So my ring name would be Crystal, and my nickname would be the Black Cat. So it's, I kind of get that name from uh, uh, Janet Jackson's song, uh, The Black Cat. And I, I've always thought like that would fit like my gimmick. And every time I go in the ring, I will not be stopped. Because I have a heart of a champion. That's what I would say. My name is Chris Stone, and this is greatness. I'm Hostel. 
um, I'm the real man, and um, my finish is gonna be hitting him in the face. So you're just gonna hit him straight in the face. Okay, wait, is there a, do you have a name for that? The hand in the face. The what? The hand in the face. The hand in the face. Yeah. All right, simple, simple That's does it. I feel, and I don't know what's telling me, and maybe the two of you already have thought about this in the past. What would your name be? All right, well, my name would be Thunder. My gimmick would be the, hmm, let's go around with the guy that electrifies, but a little bit more than The Rock. That I will shock, I will awe. The Rock was fine with electrifying. He could feel the electricity. But with me, every move will leave you speechless. And uh, speaking of moves, my fa finishing move would be, well, I don't know, maybe a, hmm, torture rack power bomb. Let's see you beat that. My uh, finishing move would probably be AJ Lee's, you know, submission, uh, the the Black Widow. Okay. So that would be mine. <laughs> would you rename it the Black Cat? Yes. Me? Okay. Yeah. Or yarn, yarn ball. Yarn ball. Ah. Yarn ball. Okay. Oh, like Just kind of tying them all up. I, exactly. I see what you're doing there. My finish, off the top, elbow drop. Everly Jade would be what my name would be, um, and then. My finishing move would be kind of like Alistair Black's Black Mass leading into Ricochet's uh, 630. That's a that's a lot to do. I'm ambitious. You, you gotta you gotta do it all. Oh, you, gotta, you, gotta. you put a lot of time on that. <laughs> <laughs> we got some pose in here too. I'm getting intimidated. Thank you. Any and we got a walk off. All right. I would be JT. I wouldn't like anyone like this kid saying he's the man. And my finisher would just be a roundhouse kick to the gut. The ra roundhouse kick to the gut. And what would you call that torture rack power bomb? Oh man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, how about this? Hmm. The n how about the nerve racker? How's that sound? I need to know your name, your gimmick, your finish, all that right now. What would it be? All right. Uh, this would be uh, J. Allen Ecstasy. All right, so I'd be coming out flamboyant, give me this, give me that. I'm gonna take it to the bank and I'm gonna show you why I'm number one, all right? Well, I will simply be known as Mr. Wonderful. I mean, think about it. How can you get more wonderful than me? Well, obviously, it'd be Jakey Bella. I'm a hardcore Bella's fan and I've got to pay homage to Nikki and it's gonna be the Rack Attack 3.0. 3.0, okay. Oh, now you're over 9,000. What, what does that mean? I'm assuming it's not your age or you really moisturize. What makes it different? What makes it 3.0? So she's had the one, the original one, and she had to change that because of her neck. So the 2.0 is kind of more of like a TKO situation. So it would just be my little twist on it, the 3.0, um, with just a lot hairier legs in it, so. <laughs> well, if you will put a power scale on some things, I will simply be over 9,000. Wow, okay, your gimmick is that you're a, a Bella fan, not a family member, not a, a long lost cousin? Um, I think I'd be like a long lost cousin. Um, you know, yeah, pretty much that'd be my thing. Bella Army member, um, just hardcore supporter, so yeah. Well, that's what the fans had to say here at WWE Access. That's it for the show, so join us again next month. We will be coming to you live from StarCast in Las Vegas, Nevada. This has been So Says Chernoff because that is what Chernoff had to say. Bye, everyone.